February 6, 1992 started out like any normal day. People were traveling Highway 41 on their way into and out of Evansville. Planes were landing and taking off from Evansville Dress Regional Airport. The morning crowd was thinning out at JoJo's restaurant on the north side of town. And the third and final day of a quality control seminar for Evansville's Plumbing and Industrial Supply Company was beginning its final days of meetings at the Drury Inn on North Highway 41. The tranquility of this normal day would be shattered at approximately 9.50 a.m. I took a patient into the neurosurgical room and as we were transporting the patient from the, from the cart onto the surgery bed, um, the lights flickered. They didn't go off, but they flickered. My dad called and wanted to meet me later in the day to celebrate my birthday and planned to do that and the phone went dead. And that's when the crash had happened and I guess there was electrical surge across the city and um, I didn't know what, what had happened. We just thought our phones somehow disconnected and a little while later my mother called and asked if um, David was in a training still that day at Drury Inn and I said, oh yeah and she told me about the crash. So it was uh, about nine o'clock in the morning, and um, uh, while I was in the store, the building kind of shook like that, and, and the lights blinked. I mean, we didn't think anything about it. I thought, well, maybe it was just a truck going by. Anyway, I finished. I came outside, and I uh, just happened to look off to the east, and there was this huge column of black smoke, oily black smoke rising into the sky. On that morning, five crewmen, including the pilot, two co-pilots, flight engineer, and loadmaster from the Kentucky Air National Guard 123rd Tactical Airlift Wing Unit, based out of Louisville, Kentucky, were taking off for routine pilot proficiency exercises. These touch-and-goes were designated for soldiers to meeting training requirements for different types of drops. A C-130, which is a military four-engine propeller-driven aircraft, had come over from Louisville, Kentucky to do some uh, practice flying. Basically what they do is they have, na it's from the National Guard unit in Louisville, and they have a um, certification pilot, and then they typically have three, four, a number of other pilots with them, and they take turns flying the airplane, and this in uh, certification pilot makes sure that they're current on different types of procedures, landings, takeoffs, uh, a number of different things did a, a touch and go where they came in and they landed on the runway and then they took off again. And that's basically what a touch and go is. is you come in, uh, enter the pattern of the airport, land on the runway, and then depart. And there, there are variations on that. There's, there's a stop and go where you come on the runway and you actually come to a complete stop and then take off. And there's another one called a low approach where they don't actually touch down on the runway. They stay anywhere from 50 to 500 feet above the runway and just fly over the, you know, over the surface area of what would be the runway. When the five-member crew launched, the co-pilot, who was under supervision from the instructor pilot, was flying the plane. During takeoff, an engine failure was simulated on the Lockheed C-130B Hercules, which is what the crewmen were practicing that Thursday morning. Lieutenant Vincent Rin Yankar became distraught with air traffic control and checklists and did not notice the plane losing altitude. That day I was assigned to motor patrol, me and my partner Dave Burris. We were actually running radar when we looked to the north and seen uh, a lot of smoke. Uh, wasn't sure exactly where it was, but we knew something bad had happened. Everything at that point, it just seemed like it went into slow motion. I mean, I, I watched the aircraft kind of do a bank because they were making a left turn to go to 160 and it, it, it almost felt like the aircraft sort of almost stopped. Report from WFIE's Newswatch. Good morning, I'm Ann Comis. Here is what we know. A Lockheed C-130 National Guard turboprop four-engine military transport plane has crashed into JoJo's and the Drury Inn on Highway 41 at Lynch Road. The Lockheed C-130B Hercules continued to lose altitude and eventually nosedived directly behind JoJo's restaurant on Highway 41, just south of Evansville's airport, creating a cavity 8 feet deep and 12 feet wide. The plane was carrying 6,000 pounds of aviation fuel. Due to the force of the plane slamming into the ground, fuel ignited creating a fireball that blew out windows and entered the rooms along the north side of the Drury Inn Hotel. 
you're, you're watching it, but, but in your mind you're saying, this isn't really happening. He's not really doing it. But instead it did happen, and the aircraft um, came straight down. I mean, there was a huge explosion, a huge fireball. I mean, just yellow, orange, blue. I mean, all these colors of flames screaming into the air. Um, the, the, you, you literally, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know exactly how far we are, maybe a couple miles or whatever from the site, but you literally felt the ground shake. All five crew members of the C-130 died on impact. A portion of JoJo's restaurant collapsed when a large tailpiece of the plane landed on the rear quarter of the building. And what we've been able to uh, discover is that uh, one uh, waitress and one busboy are missing in the uh, restaurant at the moment. The airplane impacted entirely on the restaurant and exploded in a ball of flame. Parts of the plane and pool concrete were launched into the parking lot of the Drury Inn on the east side of the building and landed on top of the four-story hotel roof. At the JoJo's restaurant, two employees were killed when part of the airplane impacted directly on the kitchen area in the southeast quarter of the building. Two workers, a waitress, and a dishwasher were pinned in the wreckage of the collapsed portion of the structure. Two men worked for 15 minutes to try to help Lynn Scott and Matthew Phipps escaped, but were unsuccessful. Fortunately, as many as 25 employees and customers escaped the JoJo's restaurant through the front entrance unharmed. Due to the impact of the crash and the amount of aviation fuel aboard the aircraft, it created a fireball which burst into room 416 where the quality control seminar was taking place. Remember Jay Zimmer, the TV was on, and Jay Zimmer, he's not with them anymore, but he was the one right there in front of the hotel. It was in flames. And it, when I sat down, when he, I heard him say it hit room 416. And immediately a voice said, Brenda, I've taken him home. Nine of the 13 people who were in room 416 were killed when the fireball struck the building. Four of the nine employees were killed instantly. The remaining five had enough time to take action. Three of them rushed into the bathroom in an attempt to escape the flames. They were later found in the shower with both hot and cold water running in hopes to protect themselves. The fourth went to the telephone and tried to call for help, while the fifth tried to reach the door but was unsuccessful. Standing just a few feet from the door were Tom Welsh, Mary Lou Owning, Lynn Jackson, and William Capodogli suddenly found themselves in a life-or-death situation. Capodogli made it to the balcony overlooking the hotel lobby, unaware that anyone else would make it out of the room. During this time, Welsh and hotel guest Jack Eddy pulled Jackson into a room across the hall that had not been engulfed with flames. All four survivors from room 416 had serious injuries. Nearly two hours after the plane crash at 1144, the fire was pronounced under control. Due to the fire, dental records were used to identify some of the victims who were found inside the Drury Inn. Along with 16 deaths from this tragedy, there were 15 civilian injuries and six emergency responder injuries. James Duke Gibson, Jr., who was with the Evansville Police Department, arrived on the scene within minutes after the crash. He went inside the Drury Inn without proper equipment to help rescue people who were trapped. He was then overpowered with smoke and toxic fumes and had to be carried out. Gibson, along with other officers that were first responders, received the Evansville Police Department's Gold Merit Award for risking their lives to help others. On February 24th, Gibson passed away due to a toxic reaction from medication. The C-130B was known for its safety and this crash was a rare event. Air Force investigators concluded this particular crash was due to pilot error when an unrecoverable stall following a low-level approach maneuver was taking place over the airfield. Without sufficient airspeed or altitude, the crew was unable to regain control of the plane before it crashed. Although the C-130B plane crash was a tragedy for Evansville residents, it was also a learning opportunity for significant matters. The thing that was a problem to the firefighters and as you look back, you actually use it as a learning tool 
Um, there were so many people that wanted to come and help. And there was a lot of firefighters from other departments, but they didn't go through the correct routine of checking in with instant command and getting an assignment. And we call that freelancing. And even though it was very well meaning at the time, uh, after the fact, we realized we had probably 100 people on scene that were unaccounted for. And if something would happen to them, we never would have missed them because we didn't know that they were there. So that actually, as far as the Evansville Fire Department, we ended up rewriting some of the instant command protocols that we use now and uh, trained very heavily on those specific instances after this crash. So if there's any good that came out of it, it's that the Evansville Fire Department is a better department because of it. After the 1992 crash, military training exercises at Evansville Dress Regional Airport were stopped. It was reported that the Air Force will no longer allow dangerous maneuvers such as simulated engine failures when civilians are aboard. The plumbing and industrial supply company lost a third of their workforce on February 6th. They eventually merged with the Ram Supply Company. The summer after the crash, the Drury Inn reopened after a $2 million reconstruction. The JoJo's restaurant was also rebuilt and reopened the same year. This poem, to all parents, I'll lend you for a little time, a child of mine, God said, for you to love thee while he lives and mourn for when he's dead. It may be six or seven years or 22 or three. But will you, till I call him back, take care of him for me? I've looked the world over in my search for teachers true. And from the throng that crowns life loved ones, I have selected you. You will give him all your love, nor thank the labor vain, nor hate me when I come to call and take him back again. And for the happiness we have known, forever grateful stay. But shall the angels call him much sooner than we planned? We'll brace the bitter grief that comes and try to understand.